Hello and welcome to another episode of Run Level Zero. Today we're doing a special desktop review. It was requested by one of my viewers. We're taking a look at CrunchBang Linux Waldorf. This is CrunchBang 11. Uh, it was released on, looks like, May 6, 2013. CrunchBang Linux is based on Debian 7 Wheezy which means you're going to get a stable desktop environment on a rolling release update cycle. Now who should use CrunchBang? I installed CrunchBang about four days ago and I've been running it in my uh, on, on my laptop as its primary OS and in that time I've decided that CrunchBang while it's an awesome awesome desktop is not for beginners. Um, there are a lot of configuration options available but most of it has to do with either command line or configuration files which are text-based so CrunchBang I would recommend for an intermediate or an advanced user absolutely but not somebody that is new to Linux now with that said CrunchBang I I'm in love with this system uh, this is an awesome awesome uh, distribution very well thought out, very cohesive. Let's take a look at their website. One of the things that impressed me about CrunchBang was their website. There is it's very well documented. It's you have a nice support community which you can access right from their website. On the forums, if you run into any issues, you should be able to find help there. It's available in a 32 and 60 64 bit version. Uh, CrunchBang runs, it's, if you can think of, let's see, how can we say this? Debian Linux makes an awesome base to build on top of, but one of the problems that a lot of people have with running Debian as their desktop, Debian is committed to an open source ideal, and as such, a lot of the, 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 the base installs of Debian and even a lot of Debian based distros tend to be a bit spartan. You're not going to have any of the non-free codecs, the non-free drivers, you won't have Java and Flash already installed. You're going to have to do all of that stuff yourself. Well CrunchBang has done that configuration for you. So you don't have to you don't have to worry about spending a day configuring your system, you're going to get a system that works right out of the box. So let's take a peek around this system and show you what you get. Of course, as you can see, you get the OpenBox desktop, which is a, a, a file manager, a window manager rather, that has been further configured to serve as its own desktop environment. We're sitting at idle right now. Well, not necessarily. I'm recording my desktop. But even with that, uh, we're using 215 megabytes of RAM. So it's running very, very slim, which I like. Is that, that consumes your resources to run the programs that you really want to interact with to begin with. So looking at the CrunchBang desktop, across the top of the, the desktop, you have your Tent2 panel running. This is the same panel that runs in the Manjaro open box edition. And what you have here are controls for your first two desktops. So you can toggle between your desktops just by clicking on, on your bar up here. Now if you were to launch an application, you can see it appears on the desktop that it's actually running on. So you can see the icons and you can switch back and forth just by clicking on those. So it's a, it's, it's a nice intuitive slim desktop uh, selector up here. Also on the Tent2 panel you have a notification area so you can see what's running in the background. You have access to your volume control, your network settings, you have your battery indicator if you're on a laptop that will appear. You have a clipboard manager as well as the clock and time settings. On the desktop we have a nice conky that's running. It's very slim but it provides all the necessary information. You have your system info such as your host name. You have your uptime it tells you the time since your last reboot or power on. 
you can see your RAM, swap, disk, and CPU usage statistics. Again, I can't get over how slim this is running. For such a full featured system, 217 megabytes of RAM and only 7% draw on the CPU, that's, that's very impressive. Also in the Conky, you're similar to Manjaro Linux, you're provided with a list of shortcut keys. And I suggest, if you're going to use Openbox, I suggest you get used to using these as they make life a lot easier. For example, if you run Alt F2, you'll get a dialog that allows you to run a program. So, and it, it supports tab completion, just like your Bash shell. So if you type in ICE and hit tab, you'll see your options available and you just click the one you want and it'll launch a program for you. Again, you have an alt menu for alt F3 and we'll stick with the ICE and you can see that appears across the bottom of the screen. What you're looking at here is a search box as well as a list of your installed applications. So if you begin to type ICE, Again, you can see your options available and just using the arrow keys, select what you want and hit enter and again it will launch your, your application of choice. Opening the main menu on any open box distro is accomplished by a right click of the desktop or on your Tent2 panel. But you can also do it in CrunchBang by hitting Super which is your window key plus the space, it will open it for you as well. Super plus tab will open your what they're calling your client menu and this allows you to manage your desktops. If you look across the top here we have two virtual desktops. I can add a new virtual desktop from this menu so now we get a third. Alternative, alternatively, um, you can also remove desktops. Let's see, Super T, we're going to open up a terminal. Super F will open up our file manager, which is, I believe it's uh, Thunar. Yes, Thunar 1.2.3. All over the look and feel of the desktop and your themes are very cohesive, well thought out, and responsive. You also have shortcuts here to open up your text editor, which is Genie, Media Player, your web browser, Task Manager. You can lock the screen, open your volume control, you can log out or take a screenshot. There are others that you can add, uh, but those are the ones that you're most, most, likely to, most likely to use. Sorry about that. Let's take a look at your other applications. Launching the menu, again you have a shortcut to that Alt F2 program launcher. You can launch a terminal. You can launch a web browser. Ice Weasel is the default web browser. And this was, this was a nice surprise. Ice Weasel, of course, being the open source version of Firefox, it is Firefox, just with the completely open source version running. But your start page is, actually points you to CrunchBang. They've created their own custom start page, which it's a nice touch. Again, you can go to the About page for CrunchBang. You can go to the Download. You can get help from the forums in the community and there's a option to donate to the project which I highly suggest you do if you're if you're using a Linux distro as your primary operating system especially if you're using it in a production environment why not go ahead and make a small donation to them support their effort allow them to keep working and developing the great products that they develop uh, you can also search the CrunchBang site from up here their start page has a integrated search bar that links you over to Google. What I thought was pretty cool about this is you s type in your search term and when you search the output, the search results are displayed below. It feels nice. Right, getting back to this menu here. Uh, we have our file manager. We looked at that. It's Thunar. Lightweight full featured. Your text editor is Genie. Let's see you have your media player which is VLC. VLC uh, Linux standard because it's good. It, it'll play just about anything you throw at it. 
Under Accessories, you have the Catfish File Search. You can search your hard drive for files. You have an Archive Manager, Genie again, your Task Manager. Terminator is your terminal that's installed. You have a link to Thunar, or you can open Thunar as root for managing. That would be handy for managing system files. Looking at Terminator for a moment, this is a Terminator is one of my favorite uh, terminal emulators because you can right click it and you can actually split this horizontally, you can split it vertically, and have multiple terminals running within terminals. So if you do a lot of work from the terminal, Terminator is an excellent choice. Under graphics, the GIMP is already installed. View Noir, and you can take screenshots. You can even time out the screenshots. Now, let me take a moment here and let you know about my installation experience with CrunchBang. It, ha it, it installed very fast. It was just an awesome experience. But one of the things that, that really stood out to me, when you first, after you install a clean operating system with CrunchBang, and you log in for the first time, there's a startup script that runs that allows you to further customize your system. It walks you through updating your repositories, updating the system, which remember is based on Debian Wheezy, which means that you're always going to have the latest, greatest version of the OS. So there's no need to have to reinstall it at a later time just to stay updated. But it also walks you through configurations uh, of installing LibreOffice, installing Java. There's even server side and, and development side uh, options that you can download and install in that first startup. So it really helps you customize your system to the tasks that you have it intended for. Okay, so let's take a look at multimedia. Again, you have VLC, your volume control, and XF burn. I like XF Burn for my discs. It's lightweight, but it, it does a really good job. No muss, no fuss. On network, you have a submenu for your browsers. I've installed Chromium. It does not come with Chromium. It comes with IceWeasel, but you can see that there are these installation scripts. If you were to install Google Chrome or install Opera, it would walk you through the installation and what, what really impressed me was that it installed it and the themes came up on it right away as system themes. So that was pretty neat. And it adds these uh, these uh, menu shortcuts for you. Now when I said that I do not recommend CrunchBang for a new beginner, this is one of the primary reasons. that Anything that you configure or add to or take from this system you're pretty much going to do it manually. And we'll get into under the settings in, in just a minute here on how you do that. If you were to install, for example, I installed Caden Live, you install a new program or application onto your system, unless you use one of their custom installation scripts, it's not going to add a menu option for you. Now that's no problem as long as you know how to Alt F2 or choose to run the program and you know to type in Caden Live, that's not a big deal. You know, you can you can launch it right from here. And while I really don't mind doing that, I don't feel you should really have to. Uh, not not as a new user. Now if you're a intermediate or advanced user, this could be a bonus because it gives you a finer degree of control over your system. You can put your menu options where you want them. So again, that's just where I really wouldn't recommend it for somebody new. So you have an FTP client. Uh, Transmission is your BitTorrent client. XChat. You have remote desktop options, remote file systems, and SSH. You can also set up install and set up Dropbox from here. When you log in for the first time, you do get the option of installing LibreOffice, which gives you this nice submenu. You don't have to, though. If you're not running in an Office environment and you would just rather not install a full Office suite, it does give you links to Google Docs, which I thought was pretty neat. But it comes with Abbey Word 
and uh, generic, which for the average user, these two lightweight full feature programs will meet all of your needs. You have calculator and a PDF viewer. Under places, I like their places menu because you can go to your home, fo home folder but you can also look at your subdirectories right from here and have full access to I mean really you don't need to open up your file manager this is going to take you right to it so I, I thought that was a really nice feature I really haven't seen a context menu or, or a right click menu that had this degree of I guess browsability for lack of a better word you have access to your recent files uh, your system settings. This is where your configuration comes in. Anything that you're going to do on this system as far as customization, you're going to do pretty much by hand. And for example, we're, I, I discussed adding menu items for, say, my Caden Live. What you're going to have to do is go in and edit the menu configuration file on your own. And this is the one for our menu. So if I want to, just to show you here, when we look under multimedia there's nothing in there for my Caden Live so if I wanted to add it I would simply go down till I found the multimedia options which here we go menu ID equals multimedia each item tag is a menu entry so make life easy just copy that add a new line and paste it in I'm going to make this Caden Live and the command I want it to execute is Caden Live. Now I'm going to save it, close my editor, go back down to settings, open box and restart it. Now when I go to the multimedia there's Caden Live and it will launch it for me with no problems. So, there it is. So, if you want to do configuration, that's that's both that for the the intermediate user and the advanced user for Linux. This is going to be a great bonus because it gives you an an an, an infinitely fine level of control over your system which to somebody as, as you spend more time in Linux that's going to become more and more important to you but for a new user somebody that's just getting into Linux this would be very frustrating and confusing probably but hey I love it this this is an awesome system so your system menu you can configure your printers gparted for your partition editing the synaptic package manager is installed and you can configure your login settings. Also lock screen and exit are here. Having run CrunchBang for the better part of a week now, and I, I spent a lot of time on my computer, I am absolutely in love with this system. I am very thankful that, that I was pointed in this direction and I look forward to coming back to this system. I I've seldom keep a Linux distro on my system for more than a week just because I like experimenting with new things out there and that's why I started Run Level Zero. I figured if I was experimenting I might as well put up some videos and show the results of those experiments. So I thank you for the for pointing me in this direction. I am, I'm excited about this desktop and I want to watch it grow and see where it goes from here. Please let me know if there's any other desktop environments, any other distros you want me to try out, please leave me a comment. I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, if there's any how-tos, any questions you may have on Linux, um, any product reviews, any applications you want me to review, leave those in a comment too. Well, this has been Run Level Z this has been in at zero for another episode of Run Level Zero. Thank you for watching. I hope to be with you soon with another video.